Good evening, friends. Dick Riculous here, reporting live for WBIGD TV. Today, we're going to talk about another product. We're going to have Big D test and prove if it's true, if it's false, if it's right, if it's wrong, if the manufacturer's leading you down a path of destruction, if they're just plain out lying to you, lying to you, lying to you. You big dummy. We are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do. Dick Riculous here, WBIGD TV. My name is Derek and I test amplifiers to see how much power they actually put out. If you enjoy those kind of things, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Let's go on and see what we have today. New for 2019, we have amplifiers from Soundstream, the Bass Extreme line. That's right. It includes four different models, including three mono blocks and a four channel. But we're going to look at the BXA 10,000D, 10,000 watt class d mono block amplifier 199 bucks is what this sells for pretty much everywhere we got two and a half stars on amazon what do people say about it one person loves it another person says a piece of bleep the other person says two weeks it broke they don't like it the other person says they should have got the 8000 watt version many of you guys know some of you may not epsilon is the parent company of soundstream power acoustic and precision power so you'll notice that some of their amps are kind of similar across the board. But again, we're going to look at the 10,000D mono block, which says 3,300 watts at 1 ohm, 2,100 watts at 2 ohms, and 1,400 watts at 4 ohms. Those are RMS ratings according to the manual. Well, in the manual it doesn't say RMS, but on the website it does. It's got a really cool bass knob. Really like that. It's got the RJ11 style connector. It's got... Yeah, a little bass adjustment as well as a level adjustment. And it comes with a zero gauge adapter. I've never really seen an amp come with a, an adapter like this. But hey, if this amp does the power it says, it's definitely going to need zero gauge inputs. Let's check out the dimensions. 19.7 inches by 11.6 inches. You can see the metric equivalence there as well. And then the thickness is around 2.25 inches or about 56 millimeters. Now let's check the input side. We've got line in, line out, level control, adjustable subsonic, low pass filter. We have a phase from zero to 180 degrees. We have a remote control for the base. We have the power and the protect LEDs. On the opposite side, we have the speaker outputs, which are eight gauge, and there's two of them, but this is a monoblock amp. We have two 120 amp maxi style fuses. And then we have the four gauge power inputs. But again, it does come with the adapter, which I'll show off here shortly. And I'm guessing that the engineers maybe decided that it needed a zero gauge input and they just uh, originally got it with four gauge and this is just kind of a workaround. I mean, it does work okay, but I would much prefer the amp itself to have the zero gauge connections. Here's a top view of the amp. It's not a bad looking amplifier. It's got the aluminum plate there in the center. It's kind of a dark gray brushed aluminum and it has half of a tarantula, which I don't know what that means. It says it includes a BX10 base equalizer built in. Here it is, which is pretty much a parametric adjustment for your subwoofer, but I would be extremely careful because I found out that it caused some distortion in the sub, so be careful with that. Now let's get the amp dyno fired up. We'll get the amp wired up. And we will try it out. First off, 4 ohms. The amp is rated 1400 watts RMS at 14.4 volts DC. Certified test takes up to 1% THD. Yeah, 828 watts. Nowhere near 1400. Uncertified takes us up to clipping. Did a little bit better. 862, 14.44. Dynamic. Still nowhere near that 1400 watts. Not even 900, 892 watts. Yep, smack your head. That's about all we can do at this point. Oh boy. Here we go again. All right, let's try two ohm test. Rated 2100 watts at 14.4. Certified first. 1390 watts at 14.18 volts. Yep, uncertified. We don't expect much better. Not quite 1500 watts. 1490, 14.34. Dynamic. Can we get 2,000 watts? No, 1713, and she is not moving. I'm not giving you any more power than that, so just get over it. 
one ohm test 3300 watts rms is bull we know that by now it's not going to do that but let's see what it does certified up to one percent thd 1950 watts so this is pretty much a 2000 watt rms amplifier for 200 bucks that's about right uncertified 2235 not so bad dynamic there we go over 3000 watts check that out 3058 watts at 13.85 volts but somebody has something to say about these ratings good evening friends dick riculous here reporting live for wbigd tv today we're going to talk about another product we're going to have big d test and prove if it's true if it's false if it's right if it's wrong if the manufacturer's leading you down a path of destruction if they're just playing out lying to you lying to you lying to you you big dummy we are here and we're going to report it because that's what we do dick riculous here wbigd tv Alright friends, there you have seen the test of the Soundstream quote unquote 10K that can't do its RMS numbers by a little, well a little more than half I guess. Right around 2000 watts at 1 ohm, right about 1400 watts at 2 ohms, and about 830 watts at 4 ohms. Let's do a subwoofer test, have a little bit more fun with it since the amp can't do its rated power. Let's see how it does on some subs. All right, friends, there you have proof the Soundstream 10K is really about a 2000 watt RMS amplifier. Not sure why they come up with these crazy numbers, but I'll keep testing them until they start giving you the truth. I did like the amp. I like the bass knob it came with. Uh, it seemed to be pretty reliable, pretty durable. Didn't have any issues. You're welcome to pause the video here if you like to see the power ratings, power measurements. I did get over 4500 watts at half an ohm dynamic. That's a dynamic number. But anyway, we had fun testing it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you stick around till the very end because I did test another amp. Thanks to my new Patreons, Alan, William, Tim. And an extra thanks goes to Jay, Matthew, Marcus, Jesus, Tire, Soundstream Registry, Gately Audio, The Lord of Bass, Hammer McHammer, Big D. I'm out of here. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm a bit bummed about this Bass Rockers amp because I found out not long ago it's actually discontinued and they're not selling it anymore. But I just wanted to show it off anyway because I went through and I captured all the video, you know, to do the amp dyno test and do the overview and everything like that. I did want to show it off a little bit. You can see the amp here. It's a really slick looking amp. I like the brushed aluminum finish. It looks different than most amps. It does have four gauge inputs, which boo-hoo do not like that, but I did have found a way around it. I used 8 gauge to 4 gauge and then 4 gauge to 0 gauge adapters, which I hated that I had to do that. And hopefully the new model is going to come with 0 gauge. But before we get to the amp dyno test, let's take off the bottom of the amp, show you the guts, show you what it's all about. There you have it. It looks a lot like an Epsilon Soundstream power acoustic, something like that, amplifier. Just a kind of generic design. I'm going to show you one of the runs. 
the one ohm dynamic will show you certified uncertified and dynamic you can see 1913 watts at 14.15 certified uncertified we got over 2000 2006 watts and then dynamic this amp had some good dynamic power 2800 and 63 watts at 14.47 volts so actually 2888 it bumped up there just a little bit here are all the results you're welcome to pause the track here so you can see all the numbers i did test some of them a, a couple times so you'll see some higher numbers in some spots but yeah i'll tell you what i thought about this amp overall all right guys there you have the video of the bass rockers br 2000.1d what are my thoughts well overall not two thumbs up maybe one thumb and a half the drawbacks i have are three one the gain input is super touchy in other words you barely turn it and it goes all the way up or all the way down very very touchy two four gauge inputs are not even true four gauge inputs for a 2000 watt rms amp you've got to have zero gauge inputs people so we really need zero gauge inputs and it's too bad even the four gauge i couldn't use the four gauge to zero gauge adapters the other thing that drove me crazy is a silt screening that tells you the polarity of the speakers and also the positive and negative uh, inputs for your power they're on the bottom of the terminal so it's extremely difficult to see unless you lift the amp up and who does that when you have the amp in your car it's usually mounted and you look at the top yeah those are the three things i didn't like but i love the finish of the amp the brushed aluminum finish it's kind of unique you know most amps these days are black or they're just generic looking this one looks really cool it's got adjustable subsonic filter um yeah and it's 180 bucks for 2000 watts and it didn't even warm up during all those tests i did i did like 15 dyno tests and then i ran it on this gately audio box the lord of bass subwoofer for 30 minutes just thumping neighbors i'm sure were loving me but yeah it didn't even get didn't even get warm at all so i would say all right we'll do it two thumbs up i like the amp for the money you can't beat it so great deal big d until next time you know where i'm at i'm out of here